Do you know what? He's breaking rules. He's breaking all the rules because he's speaking ill of the dead and he's revealing... Even you are, aren't you? Well, <laughs> well, 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 am I speaking ill of the well, dead? That's, that's a very good question. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Well, 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 it is interesting because death and taboo and what we say about people when they've gone, in this case, your mother, yeah. um, people like to remember them at their best. Yeah, but that's either. really what inspired it, uh, to some extent, is that I was at my mum's funeral, she died in 2014, and I uh, had all these people coming up to me and telling me that my mother was wonderful. And the thing that bound all these people together was that they didn't really know her. Not really. And I think if all you're allowed to say about your dead relative is that he or she was wonderful, you may as well say nothing. I think if you really want to preserve the memory of those we have loved and lost, you've got to call up their weirdnesses, their madnesses, their flaws, because that is what makes them human, isn't well, you, it? Yeah, well, you've called this My Family, not the sitcom. Yes. So this is... Is it... How would you do... Is it stand-up? Is it a show? Is it a play? No, it's a comedy show. It's a one-man comedy show, and 95% of the show is laughter, and then 5% of the show is not laughter and people seem to be moved by it and there are some serious moments as well but no, it's a comedy show it's got footage and it's got it's got pictures and all that kind of stuff and it's all true well there it's, you are with your family oh talking God. of photos which one are you where, where are you uh, i am the one uh, sitting down on the left hand side the left there hand that's side. me with the hair uh, that's my dad who is still alive uh, and that hairy still unbelievably <laughs> yeah. uh, that's us in swansea uh, where we went for every summer holiday swansea every swansea summer looks holiday. good well yeah it looks good there a lot of the time it looks <laughs> More like that. Is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my dad's Welsh, so we went there every year for our summer. Now holidays. that looks like a really lovely, happy family snap. Your mm. mum and dad look, you know, smiling, look very happy. But yeah. the, the, the thing that has amazed me, and I'm not saying shocked that she had an affair, but shocked that you want to talk about it. So mm. it turns out your mum had an affair for many years yeah. during. Well, she had the an affair father, with a golfing father. memorabilia salesman and turned her whole life over to golfing memorabilia. As a result, it kind of defined my mum. But the key element of it, which I, you know, sometimes the audience is a bit uncomfortable with me talking about it, my mum was very proud of this affair. In a very 1970s way, she thought having an affair was glamorous, right? So she Made would tell... She, I mean, if she met you, Ruth, mm. she'd have told you about this affair within 15 seconds. Really? Did yeah, you probably have... on this sofa. Did your dad know she was having an well, affair? Well, that's something I talk about a lot, because basically I think my dad, and my mum really did broadcast it quite loudly, and we kids all knew about it, he somehow managed not to notice it. I mean, did my he dad... just go la-la-la-la? No, la, la. no. I think my dad was such a bloke, and remains such a bloke, much more male than me, that he just wasn't interested in the life of the emotions. Right. Some now, level. Here's, here's where I'm getting slightly conflicted here. Okay. Right? So you're I'm conflicted. listening and that's terrible. He was young child, his mum's having it. <laughs> but the way you're saying it, and you use two words, golfing memorabilia, yeah. is making me laugh. Well, right? exactly, that's the point. No, but, but, but you see, now, I know, am I allowed to laugh? If you feel or, bad for laughing. I mean, your mum's only dead two years, God rest her soul. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we're, we're talking about this. Am I supposed to be laughing? You are supposed um, to be laughing. Were you not crying at the time? You see, this is what I'm worried about. I don't think I was crying at the time. I think I do know that, and the show is partly about this, because the show is also about my dad's dementia, that as a comedian, what I have tried to do throughout, and maybe this is the, you know, most, uh, the most acute attempt to do this, is to make comedy out of things that are difficult and challenging in your life. And my mum's death is challenging, and my dad's dementia is challenging. And I kind of say to the audience, look, we live in a time of taking offence, don't we? Everyone's yeah. offended by everything now, yeah. but the person who should be offended by this is me. Mm -hmm. So I'm challenging the audience, you know... What to about be... your brother? We yes. saw your brothers there. Yeah. Um, do you, did you have to talk to them first and say, look, this is what I want to do, get their permission? Or well, that? yeah, I mean, they, they were very worried about it, but to be fair, they, you know, they have come and seen the show, and the thing is, you have to come see the show, because the show is what it is, is a celebration of everything that most people might normally think is shameful about you know, your parenting or whatever. There are a lot of things in the show that are very revealing and some people might think are damaging or taboo or whatever, but trust me, it's wrapped in this basket mm. of affection and love. It's, a, it's the opposite of saying you mustn't wash your dirty laundry in public. Yeah. For me, it's wash it and really have fun with but it. But then could you be accused of, well, it's, it's therapy, it's helping oh, no. you to I'm kind of deal with it. Accuse me of that. It's fine to accuse me yeah. of that. I was in therapy for 10 years. This is much better. It's much <laughs> better. And honestly, and financially, much better. So, I mean, but no, honestly, I, I do think, as a comedian, it's partly about that. And also, I have a Q&A at the end of the mm. show, and the audience put their hands up and say, well, actually, you know, I had a strange thing where I was going... I went on holiday when I was a kid with uh, my mum and dad and this other bloke who Some turned out to... Mm. Yeah, yes. People are yeah. keen to tell me but that lots every of families, family has weird lots dysfunction. Lots of families stuff. have a story, don't yeah. they? Mm. Um, well, I, what I, or where I admire you for this, my friend, is you're pushing boundaries, you're telling story, you're reinventing comedy in a different way. It is dangerous, of course it is dangerous. It can be sensitive, particularly for the family. Mm. But if we trust you, we go along with you. 
you and you're saying, look, listen, I mean you no harm, this really is a laugh at the end of the yeah. day, but still, I would be an emotional person. Yeah. I know you're an emotional person. I am. You're going to get to certain things and you're going to tell a story and your voice is going to go. Yeah, well, that has happened. That happened last night. I opened last night at the Vaudeville and there's a bit at the end which is quite serious about my dad. And I, I feel more conflicted about my dad, actually, because my mum has gone and I'm pretty convinced she would have loved this show. Does my mom... dad understand what's going on? No, he doesn't. He doesn't have the ability to do that. I have talked to him, but he can't hold it in his memory. And it is more complicated to talk about him while he's still alive in this way. And you know what? I can't justify everything in the show morally. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to do what I'm driven to do. But it does come from a good place. And so, and there's this bit at the end where I sort of say, look, you know, here is my dad, a bit of footage of him when he was healthy and vital and whatever, and maybe he wasn't quite the man I'm explaining. Maybe I'm wrong. And during that bit, I do start to go. Mm. Uh, but the audience seemed to be part of that because it's an authentic show. It's, mm. it's real. For more of the same, just click here. There were times at five o'clock in the afternoon when I was still in my dressing gown, not having brushed my teeth, not having had a glass of water, much less a cup of tea, past my lips, with a never-ending stream of people.